Hi, Thursday, everyone. It's Friday Eve, and it's weather for Weather Geeks time as we get set for a decent weekend. We're going to have a few raindrops to dodge, especially on Sunday, but in the meantime, things will definitely improve pretty markedly in time for high school football. Friday evening, let's talk about it. It actually is a little more humid this evening than yesterday evening. Today was not as hot as promised, but it's just as humid, if not a little more, bit more humid than this same time yesterday. But you'll notice the air is drying out. Chicago, Green Bay, Grand Rapids, Detroit. This is the air mass that's going to come our way as we go into the second half of the day Friday. It's been a muggy one today, but a secondary cold front is on the way, and uh, we'll really feel the difference by the second half of Friday. In the meantime, our rain gauge network today captured uh, just a few spots that picked up uh, some hefty downpours around midday, early afternoon. A lot of this was concentrated in western parts of Trumbull and Mahoning County and far western uh, Columbiana County as well. Radar estimates generally showed uh, up to an inch or so in a few spots earlier on today. But yeah, the dew points have been elevated throughout the day. They'll stay that way overnight tonight. Now, you may be saying what rain today in, in places that were dry from start to finish. We had a couple of showers last night, of course, in parts of the area. But uh, we had a few downpours mid-afternoon in eastern Mercer County, but a lot of Lawrence County, a lot of central and southern and eastern Mahoning County, and a lot of uh, Columbiana County, with the exception of far western areas, were high and dry. Uh, throughout our Thursday. As of the recording of this video, it's 718. Just one little cluster of showers right along Route 224 uh, out towards Berlin. And uh, no lightning and thunder with this as of this recording around Deerfield, but that could change before the evening is through. I wouldn't be surprised if we got a clap of thunder in a couple of spots. Random shower here and there, but it's certainly not much rain. We still have some active severe thunderstorm watches from the Hudson Valley in New York down through eastern PA, parts of New Jersey, the New York City area heading uh, down towards the nation's capital as well. That's where there's been some heavy, gusty storms over the last several hours. Wow, is this a sight to behold? This is Hurricane Lee, which went from a Category 2 to right to a Category 4. It's probably, honestly, it's if it's not a Category 5, it will be before the evening is through. Uh, rapid intensification. It basically just looks like a buzzsaw. It's a perfect-looking tropical cyclone. It's in an extremely favorable environment for development and intensification. You have bath water underneath it. You have a lack of wind shear aloft. And so it's just going to town here with the pressure down to 953 millibars and the sustained winds at 130 miles per hour. Now the good news with Lee is it's not over any land masses. It's basically in the middle of nowhere right now. And it's going to stay that way for the most part. Now there could be some tropical storm force winds that try to sneak into some of the Caribbean islands, the Leeward Islands. But the center of Lee is going to miss those islands to the north and actually not impact any land, it looks like, directly through much of the first half of next week. This goes all the way through Tuesday at 2 p.m. It's still out here. I mean, it's way far away from the U.S. It's going to miss the uh, Bahamas. It's going to miss Cuba, Hispaniola, and Puerto Rico. The question for the U.S. is what happens during the second half of next week. And that's an open question at this point. Uh, we have a few different uh, possibilities. It looks like it will not be an impact for Florida. But could it uh, brush the Outer Banks of North Carolina? Maybe. Perhaps a more likely scenario is it has some impacts for coastal New England and certainly Atlantic Canada. That would be the zone I'd be most concerned about. But this is 9, 10 days from now. This is tail end of next week. We've got all sorts of time to track Lee and talk about uh, the possibilities and hone in on the forecast. We are not, of course, expecting any impacts from Lee around here. This is, at worst, going to be a far eastern U.S. problem. In the meantime, fine evening for high school football Friday evening. Now, the dew points will be elevated at the start of Friday, but they'll come down appreciably during the second half of the day, meaning very comfortable stuff uh, for Friday evening. We'll be dry, and we'll also be dry in Columbus on Saturday for uh, the YSU-OSU game, kickoff at noon in the Horseshoe. A lot of our area residents, of course, are fans of both teams, and this will be a good experience for these, the uh, athletes and the staff of YSU to go down to the Horseshoe and take on one of the best teams in college football, of course. And, uh, yeah, we're expecting temperatures in the 70s with dry weather. This is an error over here. We're going to ignore that. <laughs> It'll be in the 70s in Columbus, not the 50s. And we are expecting a good deal of sunshine with some fair weather clouds as well. Our weather will be pretty quiet Friday into Friday night and for much of Saturday as well. There could be some showers off to our east on Saturday. As nearby as maybe Pittsburgh and Dubois, there could be a shower or a storm. We're going to keep a dry forecast in our local area Saturday. We think it's mostly uh, east of I-79 out into West Central PA that we have some elevated chances of showers and storms. As we go into Sunday, though, uh, it looks like there'll be enough instability 
and perhaps uh, a little bit of an enhancement of the uh, dip in the jet stream that's present across the uh, Great Lakes states that there could be a shower or storm a little bit farther to the west on Sunday, including our television viewing area, but I don't think it's going to be much rain. Uh, a lot of the weekend will be dry, and it won't be that hot. It'll be kind of muggy, 78 on Saturday, 75 on Sunday. Uh, and then a more pronounced cold front looks like it'll head our way Tuesday into Tuesday night, maybe parts of Wednesday. Once that front co finally clears the area, sometime between Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, there are some model differences on the, on the speed of the front, but once it clears us, we're going to have a few bonafide cool days, it looks like, next week, with daytime temperatures uh, perhaps no higher than the upper 60s to around 70. Wednesday, probably through about Friday of next week with a warm-up to follow for next weekend. So yeah, it's not like we're going straight into a mid-autumn kind of a pattern, but it's definitely a distinctly different pattern than what we started out September with, with flirting with 90 a few times earlier on this week. That'll do it for me tonight on Weather for Weather Geeks. Don't forget, no weather geeks during football season on Fridays, unless the weather is particularly active. So we will see you back here next week. It'll be uh, actually on Wednesday because I'm out of town Monday and Tuesday. I'm attending the uh, annual National Weather Association Conference. It's in Kansas City, Missouri uh, this year. So I'll be flying out there this weekend and uh, attending sessions and meeting up with some colleagues and uh, learning all the ins and outs and, and new stuff uh, going on in the weather enterprise, all the latest research. Uh, those conferences are always good learning experiences as well as networking experiences, and it's it's good to just commiserate with fellow uh, people in the weather enterprise, whether they be on TV or elsewhere. So that's what I'll be doing Monday and Tuesday, but I'll be back on Weather for Weather Geeks on Wednesday. See you then.